Welcome to Podcasting Smarter, the podcast for podcasters by podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is the official podcast from Podbean, featuring podcasting interviews, best practices, and helpful tips. We're here to give you the tools, resources, product updates, and news to help you get started podcasting and keep your podcast growing. Hello, hello, and welcome, everyone. We are so excited that you're here with us today. Hello, and welcome to all of our teachers and educators for this month's Podcasting Smarter Live episode. Podcasting for Teachers, our live masterclass. We are joined today by Matt Richards from Creative Digital Learning. Hi, Matt. How's it going? Hello. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Norma, for having me here. It's awesome to be here and uh, can't wait to share some stuff with all your listeners. We are so excited that you're here today. I'm going to read our brief intro and then we'll jump in. We've got this amazing masterclass for all you educators out there. And we're just so excited to support teachers and get teachers podcasting in the classroom. So here we go. Hello and welcome everyone to Podcasting Smarter and our February live event, Podcasting for Teachers Live Masterclass with Matt Richards of Creative Digital Learning. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Podcasting Smarter has live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and educators. We also have exclusive recorded episodes on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. Podcasting Smarter is brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 620,000 podcasts. To start your podcast, head over to podbean.com today. And now we will get started. Hi, Matt. Hi, Norma. How are you? Good, good. Okay, so we have this beautiful presentation. So I'm just going to start my screen share and we're just going to get straight into it and start sharing this masterclass because we have a lot of information to get through today. Here we go. All right. So this is our masterclass podcasting for teachers. We are joined here by Matt and today is Tuesday, February 7th. Well, I guess it's it's the 8th in Australia. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it sure is. Yep. And so you can join us live here on YouTube, on Podbean's LinkedIn as well. And if you missed anything, obviously you can watch the replay and you can listen to it here on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. So we're joined here by Matt today. Here's a bit of Matt's information and um, have a screenshot. Send send Matt an email. Please do. Yep. There's my contact details if you uh, need to reach out. You can see, yes, I'm from Australia, a little city called Adelaide in South Australia. Um, but uh, it doesn't matter that we're on the other side of the world from you guys. Uh, we all are trying to achieve the same thing. So like Norma said, grab a screenshot or a photo or whatever you need. Absolutely. And my name is Norma Jean Belenke. I'm the head of events here at Podbean. We've been hosting podcasts since 2006, and we offer various hosting solutions, enterprise solutions, private podcasting, live streaming, monetization, and more. And here's a bit of my information. And you can always reach out at podcastingsmarter at podbean.com with any questions. So today we've also got my colleague, Ronnie Gosh, supporting in the chat here, who is our podcast specialist here at Podbean. So if you do have any questions today, pop them in the chat and Ronnie is here as well. So today we'll be going for 55 minutes and we'll be uh, presenting for almost an hour and then Ronnie will be here in the Q&A. So our workshop goals today, Matt, let's talk. We want to talk about how teachers can create successful podcasts. Absolutely. It's a bit of a scary space for some people, but it actually is super easy to do. So that's why I guess for these workshop goals, we're looking to see how we can get you guys as teachers to be successful and have success with your students and, you know, the who, what, when, where, why of your podcast. What do you think, Norma? Absolutely. We're going to go over formatting your show, a brief overview of gear, what podcast hosting is, how to get your podcast out and distributed into the world where all of your listeners are listening, where they're going to find it. So why podcasting and education? This is a really big one. So students can really listen from anywhere, which is a really big one. Some people are auditory learners. You know, some people need to see things or read things or they're kinesthetic learners, but audio learners are, it's a real type of learning. And some people, when they hear something, they're going to retain that information better as well. 
We've also got supplements to visual curriculum. So maybe you have slides or you have a visual within your curriculum, but there's a podcast element to it. So it can supplement what you're already doing. It's a participatory medium, which also means that when your listeners are listening, they're having their own experience. So when they're hearing something, they may be visualizing something else in their own head. I might just jump in and in, in uh, participatory from the creation side of it as well. If you see a classroom of students engaged in creating uh, podcasts of any kind, you'll see that everyone's on task and they're all engaging. It's, it's super exciting to watch. Absolutely. And I mean, even just having the podcast on with prompts, right? Like, okay, everybody draw a dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dog's going to look different to everybody. And that's a very simplistic example, but it is something where, you know, everybody's going to interpret that audio differently. Mm-hmm. We've also um, realized that podcasting is good for studying and memorizing information. Absolutely. Yeah. And Matt, you're going to talk about this a lot more, but there is a low barrier to entry in podcasting. It's very easy to get your podcast set up and running. Um, And we talk about this all all the time. Yeah. It's probably one of the sticking points for many teachers to feel like they need, you know, super expensive studios and, you know, even big microphones like you've got in front of you, Norma. But the actual reality is you don't need that. You, um, it's actually super easy to enter into the podcasting space. And most teachers probably already have the technology in their room to, to get up and go. So, yes, we want you to feel empowered. You don't have to have thousands of dollars of equipment. You can start a podcast today from your phone, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And Matt, you're going to go over some of those recording basics as well, which we're so excited about. And then, like we were just saying, it's budget friendly. Right. So, you know, no matter what your budget is, you can create a podcast, which is great. Podcasting also has a growing listenership. So, more and more people are listening to podcasts. You know, we have statistics on this from some incredible organizations. Matt, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Well, it's interesting because when you have a discussion around uh, with students around listening to podcasts, and they often reference their family, their parents. Uh, their carers and and what podcasts they're listening to and and they see them I guess as adults who are constantly listening to podcasts in cars and when they travel and wherever they might be going and so I guess as students in a class they see this as a contemporary medium to engage with and it's like well I want to be part of that as well so it is growing and then now of course there are so many podcasts for kids here in Australia we have our own ABC uh, which uh, has a bunch of channels dedicated to kids listening. So, you know, the medium is expanding and always growing and it is growing into that younger uh, generation as well. Absolutely. And we've got a couple of stats here. 62% of Americans listen to podcasts and 40% of Australians. So that number continues to rise every year. It's really something where we're seeing every single year, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So next, we're going to talk about how how teachers can use your podcast in your class. So you can use your podcast to map out a curriculum, to have a class discussion or interviews. Matt, do you want to talk about storytelling next? Yeah, absolutely. So storytelling obviously forms a huge part of telling, bringing the creativity into podcasting as well. So I guess this whole how, and when we talk about mapping out a curriculum and having discussions and and these are the other dot points here, you know, making a classroom parent announcements, all those sorts of things. What we end up with is a product at the end that allows students to feel empowered that their, their creation is heard and actually heard too. So it's not just a case of creating something for the teacher to listen to and then we tick it off, we tick that box and we move on to the next thing. No, no, this is so much more impressive and empowering because the creation that the students have made gets shared with their local community or their class or the world even. And so I guess that's why it's so significant. So, you know, t- telling stories and, and sharing discussions and so on with the, the greater world, that's where it's so exciting. They realize how empowering it actually is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think also building that confidence in students. If it's a teacher podcast, you know, that's one thing, sharing information, but also, you know, empowering students to make their own podcast to, to really use their own voices is so important as well. We've also had examples of graduate students and college students creating their thesis with podcasting, as well as, like you were saying, there's so many incredible podcasts out there for children. As a teacher, you can customize playlists and share other podcasts as well with your students. So it really is an incredible medium to share with your class. Yeah, some of that research that we mentioned is from our friends at Edison Research. 
and from commercial radio in Australia. Sorry, Norma, I'll just jump in. One of the big things I think is is for students and when it comes to sharing is that they mm. actually see their creation online. So when you go to a, like Podbean, you go to a platform where, you know, it's it's presenting your work. When they see that their work is is online, that's where the excitement comes into them and that, that reality of what they've created. So that's why it's, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Absolutely. So next, we're going to talk about how many podcasts are out there because it's such a growing medium. And you know, don't be intimidated by these numbers. When you see how many podcasts are out there, just know that there's room for you. There's room for your voice. There's room for the content that you're going to create for your community. At Podbean, we have over 620,000 total podcasts hosted with us. Matt, do you want to take it from here? Yeah, there are well over 2,500 podcasts on the Apple Podcast platform. So we'd like to think that a lot of those flow through from Podbean itself as well. So there are a lot of podcasts out there. And what's really interesting is that sometimes we think it's a little bit scary. You know, there's some big players, there's some big name podcasts out there. How on earth can I have a podcast in the same space as them? And that is a genuine fear and concern. But the reality is, is that platforms like Podbean and they're pushing through to say the Apple podcast platform. That just makes it happen. And so you, you do in effect get to play with the big boys. You know, your, your students' podcasts are sitting there right alongside some of the big names. Absolutely. So Apple podcast has over two and a half million. And then the podcast index as well has over four and a half million podcasts. So it's definitely something where podcasting as a medium is just growing exponentially. So we are so excited for you to join the club and start a podcast for your educational community as well. So today, we're going to go over three concepts, which we're super excited about. The first is confirming your podcast concept and pre-production. And then we've got recording and producing your podcast and then publishing and distribution. So here we go. We're going to jump right into it because we're already at 12 minutes. Oh my gosh. All right. First is concept and pre-production. At Podbean, we always talk about this. First and foremost, just do it. Your podcast is never going to be what it is on episode 100 as it is on episode 1. Right? <laughs> if you ask any podcaster, Matt, you know, you go back and you know, you say, oh, you want to listen to your first or second episode again? They're going to say, oh, no, you can't make me. <laughs> but that's, what, that's what's so great about podcasting. You know, The more you do it, yeah. you only get better by starting out and learning. The more episodes you produce, the better you get at creating content. It's really one of those things where don't feel like you don't have you know, the expertise or the training to start. There is a podcast for everybody and you're going to grow with your content and your show. I love this. That, that idea that you've got to jump in with both feet and you are really going to get better the more you do it. So you're absolutely right. Yeah, 100%. And done is better than perfect, right? Everybody's going to have those episodes out there that you know <laughs> they just yep. they don't come out the way you want, or you couldn't edit something out, or whatever uh, it is, right? But it's consistency. It's saying to your to your audience, you know, however often you publish, you know, I'm showing up, I'm here, yes. So yeah, absolutely. From a school's perspective, you know, they love a school will love to see that their students are publishing their podcasts. So even if they're not perfect, it doesn't always matter. Hey, our students are creating these and there is content there to share. So you're right, done absolutely. is better than perfect. Get their get their voice heard. Absolutely. And I love that, especially on the student side, right? Because kids are there to learn. They're not there to do things perfectly. They're there to, you know, learn a process. So if you include podcasting in that, it's expression. Whatever the content is, is incredible, but also the production of it and you know, creating that, sharing your voice, the confidence it takes. Those are all incredible skills that students will get value from. So that's also important. And we'll talk about starting quickly in a bit. Um, but we first want to talk about your audience avatar and who your ideal listener is. Um, who's your audience, right? If you're a grade school teacher, is your audience going to be the students in your class? Is it going to be parents? Is it going to be the PTA? It's so important to think about you know, who your ideal listener is. And that also stems back to what is your con? So what are you creating? And, and therefore, that leads to you know, who, who do you want to hear it? So if you're going to create something that's on, say, Apple Podcasts, then you need to have some sort of structure as to who you're going to target to listen to your work. Exactly. What those demographics are and what do they want? Where do they want to listen? A hundred percent. So now we're going to talk about the formats of podcasting. So we've got the solo podcast. It's you and the mic. <laughs> just alone. It's just, hello. 
That's right. But this one's a great one, though, for sharing those. We were talking before about storytelling. And if, Mm -hmm. you know, you think about students who have written narratives and they want to try their own voices or, you know, their, their own expression and demonstrate what they can do, this one's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the time for announcements, and this can be teacher led or it can be student led, right? Maybe you have a podcast just for your specific class or your school or your grade in your class. And, uh, you know, maybe, you know, every week a different student comes on and reads the announcement. So that's all, always a great format. Yep. Then we've got the co host and shared podcast. Well, that's the same idea, really, but except we've got extra people in the room. So when you've got a co-host or a shed, like what we're doing right now, Norma, we've got two people and we can backwards and forwards, and that brings a whole another dynamic to a conversation. So one of the key things here is that unlike the solo podcast, which is generally scripted, the co-host and shared podcast, you can follow a bit of a map, but, you know, how it goes can change from, you know, from time to time. And, uh, yeah, sort of there's nothing set. Absolutely. And you do get to bounce off each other, which is always really fun as well. So next, we've got the interview podcast. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's a great one. If we want to have, as it says, you know, we, we have an interview. I might have some questions lined up and, and I really want to gather some information or share a bit of a story about a person. It's bi-directional, but one's leading the other person. So a little bit different to your co-host, which is bouncing off each other. This one is probably a little, more, a little bit more steered in a direction that requires specific answers from the interviewee. So, Absolutely. And that can be great for guests at your school that you want to highlight maybe some projects that they're doing or some interest in community service initiatives. And it can also be for students to you know, share a little bit more about themselves and practice their interview skills and their public speaking. Correct. So then we've got the panel or roundtable. This is always a fun one. Yeah. So look, probably very similar to the co-host where you are bouncing ideas off each other, but obviously a lot bigger. And on a technical aspect, you might want to consider, you know, how everyone can have access to speaking clearly into microphones or devices. But at the end of the day, this one is one where it's just, I get a greater sense of input to to the, the topic of conversation. A lot more people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then we've got our last actual format is storytelling. So obviously, this one fits in with education so seamlessly. And, you know, we share this fact at Podbean sometimes. It's that if there is a fact within a story, people are 20 times more likely to remember it. So if there's anything that you want to teach your students, if you put it in a story, their brains are more likely to receive that information and, and to keep it, you know, and retain it in their brain. So that's always a really good one. And then in terms of formatting, we've also got episodic versus serial. And that can mean, you know, each episode stands alone on its own. Or you have episodes that are connected. Maybe you do a storytelling podcast and it's broken up into, you know, a different, a different episode every week, but they're all connected. You know, so you've got to start out at the first episode. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a lot of classes that, classes that I've worked with in the past is where it is very episodic, where we have students who form their own podcast on their own, I guess, a given topic, but they expand that in their own ways. And so we have lots of separate episodes. But I tell you what, having um, serial tied in with storytelling is a really exciting concept. You know, we, we think about how we watch TV and we listen to podcasts that are a story that is told over time. So Blend those two together with your class and wow, that'd be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Well, next we want to talk a little bit about the organization of your podcast. And I'm just going to go into this briefly because Matt's going to talk about this a little bit more. So in general, you want to think about whether you want to have a script, right? And Matt, you talked about this. The solo podcast is a little bit more script heavy, but it's also to what extent, right? Do you want to have bullet points and kind of a loose a loose organization of your podcast or is it going to be completely scripted and you're going to read a very specific script? The next thing is to have a roadmap. Yeah. So the roadmap and you're going to go into this extensively. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We're just going to briefly go over here because you know, with your roadmap, you want to have an introduction, right? On every podcast, you want to make sure that you, know, you welcome your listeners, you tell them what the episode is going to be about, any episode announcements as well. And then also, you know, you have your main topic. That's the meat and potatoes of your of your podcast episode. And then within there, you can utilize segments. So you can break it up into multiple smaller segments. And, and you talk about this really eloquently. So 
we'll let you jump in there. Um, and then we've also got outros. So you can thank your listeners and just tell them, you know, all the ways they can find the podcast. They can like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. So Norma, the, one of the things that happens generally in a classroom with students and wanting to create a podcast is the first thing they want to do is go and grab their device and hit that record button. And the planning and the mapping out of what they're going to say becomes forgotten about and it's it's so important it's it's super important so that whole point at the start there which is scripting yes or no and to what extent you're right you know if i'm doing a solo podcast and it's a story or it's something that i want to relay and you know I, i'm probably going to have that all scripted out but as we talked before about the co-hosting example where you're bouncing off each other we don't necessarily want a full script we might want touch points and so how we choose, and we'll get into this with some diagrams in a minute, but how we choose to do that, I guess, is, is entirely up to the content. This this roadmap, of course, we're going to need to have that introduction where we are welcoming our listeners, and we do want to tell them what it's about. And, and that's even where things like jingles and bits of music come into it as well because it's sort of branding your, your podcast. The meat and potatoes of your episode, of course, that's where the guts of your research or your storytelling and even just, the, I guess, the backwards and forwards comments and, and uh, conversation is all going to happen. And again, like you said, the outro, send them off. And, and I guess the intent there is you want them to come back and listen to the next episode. So I guess leave them wanting more. Absolutely. And it's also where you can you know, direct listeners to your show notes, talk about links, talk about announcements, anything like that as well. Some other considerations that we're going to go over are the music, like you said, Matt, and audio cues, right? It's that subconscious moment of, oh, I hear the music, the episode's starting, right? And we all have those kind of, that kind of subconscious moment with music. And then add insertion if it's applicable to your podcast. And when we say add insertion, it can be for monetization and ads. But it can also be where if you have popular episodes within your school podcast or within an educational course, you can use dynamic ad insertion to announce updates, right? Hey, guys, just wanted to let you know we have an open house or we've got a field trip coming up, things like that, so that you can put um, time-sensitive announcements within an episode that may be evergreen or people can listen to it anytime. All right. And let you take it from here with the run sheet. Yeah. So this was my little idea of a run sheet in the idea that we can separate what we create into different tracks. So you'll see that you've got five tracks in front of you. We obviously start with this intro and welcome where we introduce the podcast, anyone who's speaking in the mic, any guests and so on. So, And that's going to be paired up with that, that music, that branding music. What are we going to talk about? So what are we covering? Number two, we're going to list out those key points that we're going to cover in our podcast. And that's the meat and potatoes in number three, the discussion points, the guts of that podcast. You know, that's where the real key part of it is and it's going to take the, the bulk of the time. Um, and that's the bit that really, it's either scripted really well or it's really mapped out well so that the, I guess, the reader or the, the podcasters know what they're doing in their direction and, and how to say it. But number four, the wrap-up, we just summarize it and bring it all back together. What are your takeaways, any actions, or even any calls to arms? So is there anything that we want you to do from here on in? And number five is a bit of an optional one. You know, are you signing off? Do you have a do you have a sign off? You know, are you using your outro music? You definitely want to do that. You know, you might just have a sort of a, a, a key something at the end that you you repeat. But reintroduce your presenters just to remind everyone who's been uh, talking to them and round out by your music that branding again so that they they know that when they hear it what it means so the way i've presented that across all five is i've staged them uh, separately and in, in thinking that sometimes it's easier to record in separate tracks and so if there's any editing or changes that need to be made it's always easier to edit in a separate track than it is in one big long recording absolutely so this diagram here is my little podcast planner which by the way you can grab this off my website which is mattrichards.net.au and it's nothing more than a mind map. It really is. It's pretty simple. You could probably make your own if you really want, but this one's there for you to grab. And it's just as simple as saying, hey, in the middle, what's the theme and the topic? And then around the outside, we've got topic one, two, three, and four, where we might put some key ideas. And then in the circles are the talking points. And this particular planner is for the kind of podcasts where it's an, a bit of a co-hosted one or a roundtable one, one where there's multiple students all talking at the same time. And the idea being that those talking points in the circles, you can sort of have someone who drives the whole podcast and tick them off as you go. So you always know what your direction is and what you're going to be talking about. And this can work for 
just about every topic. Like I said, it's nothing more than a mind map. This is um, we're not breaking new ground here with this. It's just a really useful tool to get your students up and running. Absolutely. And it really helps them, you know, kind of visually map out what they're going to create. Well, probably more important, Norma, is the fact that students, when they start to do any podcast that isn't prepared or isn't scripted, they will immediately lose their way. So, you know, they've got all great okay. intentions <laughs> and they've probably got the first few lines ready to roll out the gate, but then they're lost and they start looking at each other behind the microphones. And what are we going to say? I don't know. Like the rest of us, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. So, Like all podcasters, it helps to have a plan, right? And and it's it's interesting, right? Just making sure that your preparation and your excitement are on the same level, right? Because as podcasters, we all know that excitement of, I'm going to start a podcast and I'm so excited and you know, that enthusiasm. So just making sure that your organization and your and your pre-production matches that excitement, I think is is so important as well. Yep. So that on your screen there, that run sheet on the left is is nothing more than just sort of I, I guess it's a little bit like the the mind map. It's just plotting out who's doing what, who's saying what, and what are the key parts that, you know, if you want to sort of spread the load a little bit, you know, you're gonna read about this or you'll talk about that. Like I said, we're not breaking new ground here. They're just useful resources to help teachers sort of map stuff out. That's all. Absolutely. And now we're going to talk a little bit about artwork. So this is super important. In terms of artwork, your artwork's going to dictate a few things. So you want to make sure that it's at least 1,400 by 1,400 pixels and at most 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. And the Mm. reason we're talking about this so extensively is because if your artwork is outside of the size parameters a lot of directories will not distribute your podcast, right? Or your artwork Mm. won't show up. So that's number one. (laughs) And it's really important, right? Because your artwork is the first thing that people are going to see, right? Before they have a listen, before they even hear your podcast, they're going to see that artwork and it's got to show, you know, what your podcast is about. So you want it to be dynamic, but you also want it to showcase kind of the vibe of your show. Um, mm. You also want to make sure the format is JPEG or in PNG, and it's less than one megabyte in file size. If it's over this, it won't show up in a lot of directories and you can, your podcast won't be listed. Additionally, you want to make sure that your artwork can be seen from a small size and that it's a simple design. Can I jump in here, Norma? With, yeah, absolutely. With that one there, that small size and simple design, That is probably one of the biggest things that students immediately struggle with. They feel like white space has to be filled. You know, if you students see a space and they feel like I've got to fill every corner of it, you know, because it's empty and I've just got to put stuff in there. But really, this is a perfect example of where simpler or less is more, you know. So, I mean, look at those examples you've got there. That first one, that armchair book is, uh, you know, there's all white underneath it, you know, and now... Students would probably normally think I've got to put something there and you don't. So yeah, the less is more concept really applies here. Absolutely. Because people are going to be seeing this image in big and mostly small, right? On a podcast app. So you want to make sure that it's not too busy because people are going to, you know, see it. It needs to be able to be seen positively from multiple sizes yeah. screen wise. So Correct. definitely a big consideration. Easy to read, like we just said. Yep. Um, and then dynamic and, and really showcases what your podcast is about. As you yeah. can see, we have some examples here, right? One is Welcome to Night Vale. That's a very popular fiction podcast. Armchair Bookers is obviously a wrestling podcast. You can see the wrestling ring. It's super straightforward. And then Lit Cast of Doom is about, it's a literary podcast, right? So you see a book there. It, it's okay to be really literal with your artwork. And it seems like having something simple would be counterintuitive and that you mm. want to really attract people. But actually having something simple can be the best thing. That's right. And to engage a class, something we've done in the past is this is a great opportunity for a little class competition. So we can have students sort of submit their artwork as, hey, you know, we're, we're going to be running our class podcast and we need some artwork. So if you feel inclined or you, you enjoy that sort of thing, let's get everyone to throw a submission and we can do you know a bit of a, a class vote or however you feel it might work in your class. But at least that way you as the teacher is not driving it and you can allow their creativity to shine through. Absolutely. 100%. That's such a great idea. Next, we are going to be talking about recording and production. Production. 
Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. So we're, we're going over a lot today. Honestly, we're going over so much today. So bear with us. You can always watch the, the rerun of our live stream chat today of our masterclass, because honestly, we're just speeding through a lot of this just to go over the basics. And we're going to have resources in the comments here in the description from Podbean, from Matt, directions to Matt's website for those visuals to Podbean to get you up and running, all that good stuff. So don't feel like you have to memorize a lot of this stuff. We're just going over the basics so that you can understand what's going on. I just want to preface that (laughs) before we jump in any further. So in terms of recording on the Podbean app, you can very quickly record, edit, and upload your podcast through your phone. So on Podbean, on our public app, we have a professional audio recorder with a really easy to use interface. So you can use sound effects. You can upload your own music. It's a really incredible tool. The audio quality is really high. And you can have each of your guests join as well. So you can record multiple people. So we always tell people to get your podcast up and running just super quick. Mm. Use the Podbean app. It's an incredible function, that recording on the Podbean app. Also, if you're interested in music, and I think Matt's going to talk about this a little bit more, you want to use that music for intros, outros, transitions as well. Maybe you're going from one segment to the next within your podcast. You want to make sure you have those audio cues, right? It really helps people link things subconsciously within your show. And some things that we talk about here at Podbean are to just make sure that you have the rights to any music that you include in your podcast. That's a really big one. Yeah, big conversation we have in classrooms as well about you know using music, uh, where, where do the rights live? And in the spirit yeah. of fairness to artists, how should that look? Exactly, exactly. So you just want to make sure that, that you have the rights. And we have several incredible little samples and snippets at Podbean on, on the app as well. And some other programs to look at are LMMS, Ableton Live, and GarageBand, which we're going to talk about a little bit as well. Yeah. Some basic recording gear. You know, you can use your phone, so, you can use the set of headphones, but we're going to talk about a couple other things. Yeah. Matt, did you want to jump in? Yeah, I'll jump in. So some basic recording gear. Look, like I said before, a lot of people feel like they need to you know, spend thousands on expensive studios and you don't need to do that. When if, Look, if you're fortunate enough to use devices like an iPad in your classroom, then you've already got exactly what you need. There's a microphone in it and it's got garage band, as we talked about before, as a perfect recording interface. So you're already actually set, ready to go. If you want to expand that out, of course, there are microphones that can be external. You can plug in and, and they give you a different sound quality. And of course, that's for you to investigate and, and explore and ask questions about. A set of headphones. Oh, can't understate that one. A set of headphones is super important. Unless you want a classroom full of noise, having headphones where you can monitor your own work and the students can hear themselves nice and clearly without the distraction is really, really important. You might even need something like an interface where if you want to have extra microphones like that little picture there, that's a Rode mic, podcasting mic, and you might need an interface that will actually connect in with your device so you can get those really big professional microphones plugged into your device, whether it's an iPad or a a computer or whatever. And that door software, that uh, digital audio workstation, that recording software, like I've mentioned before, GarageBand is probably the easiest entry point for students because it just opens up so many doors. It's easy to record on. A lot of people do get scared by it when they open it. It's like, oh, there's a lot going on here. I'm not really sure where to start. But with you know, with a few workshops and there's, there's plenty of resources around, it's easy to unpack and you can get kids recording on there pretty quick. Absolutely. And we've just got some basic recording tips, right? So like we mentioned, use notes to get yourself organized. Right. And we've got a lot of a lot of resources there. It's important to hydrate and warm up before recording, right? If you're gonna, you know, just make sure you practice talking, warm up, do vocal warm-ups, anything there, and make sure you drink enough water. Um, you don't need a soundproof room, but you know, there's always little hacks for that. So you can prop up some pillows. A lot of people go under a blanket, you know, if that's an option yeah. for you. You know, just to cut down on echo or some of that natural reverb. Yeah, I was going to say, even underneath classroom... Underneath the desk? Yes, under classroom tables. You've got a carpeted floor, probably. It's, it's not that bad. Exactly, exactly. If you've got any beanbags in the reading area, just kind of make a little mm. make a little fort. And, yes, uh, you know, just cut fun. down. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> definitely, you don't need a studio. You don't need a soundproof room. No. You know, this is... What, and we've had some very professional podcasters with big audiences talk about this all the time. I was in my closet, you know? So... I think Uh, there's definitely flexibility there. And most teachers are just so creative in terms of finding solutions and 
and being solutions oriented, just think of you know where you mm. you're not going to get a lot of audio reverb. Small space, soft walls. That's kind of what you want. Correct. And then just being familiar with your gear, right? Like Matt was saying, you don't need a big professional mic. A set of headphones will get you really far. And just make sure yes, that no will. matter how you're recording, that you're just you practice, right? Even if it's just you know to to get things going, you're familiar and you know all the bells and whistles and how the gadget works. This is this. You, yeah. Yeah. No, this comes back to what we were saying before that you progressively get better and better and better. And, yes. and this is a really good example of that is that yeah, being familiar with your gear, you know, you might think about how you do your recordings at what stage you press this, do this, tap that, whatever it might be. And you just progressively get better and better in your recordings as you go through, just you know, improving quality. Exactly. Exactly. And then, and then we've also got, you know, figuring out how you're going to position yourself while recording. And and we mean physically, right? So are you going to be super close to the mic? Are you going to be far away yeah. from the mic? Right? Or what's the angle ang- angle of yourself with the mic? And and that can be with, with a bigger microphone. It can also be with the microphone on your headphones, honestly. Yeah. It's just about making sure that you're aware of physically where you are in relation to the device that's going to pick up sound. Because that can really and change be- lots of stuff. Yeah, there, and there might be an opportunity to obviously re-record. You might you might just do your intro, and even just listening back to your intro, you think, oh wow, that didn't quite sound right. We'll redo it, and then you start to learn and go, okay, well now that we know how to position ourselves and we get the best sound, is a fun tip is that uh, particularly with iPad, I see a lot of kids talking into the bottom of the iPad, thinking it's like an oversized phone. So, a hot tip: the microphone's on the back at the top. So you know. There's a really, really good example. Well, where am I placing my face and where am I talking into? So exactly. you're right. But where am I placing my face? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yep. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Well, Matt, I'm gonna let you take it from here and talk about intro music. Yeah, sure. So your intro music. So I have a little bit of a, a bit of a, a system that works and it's worked with many classes and I call it the three B's. Introduction music doesn't have to be complicated. And in an app like GarageBand where you've got hundreds and hundreds of loops that you can engage with and build your own music, the three B sort of fits in. We have three tracks. We start with a beat, you know, whatever it might be. You pick one, then we pick a band instrument, which is like a guitar or a keyboard, something with strings. And then we might even throw a bass in there as well. And you know what? If you really wanted a fourth track, there could even be an embellishment of some sort. And when I mean embellishment, you know, it could be like a, a chime or a triangle or a, what, a crash or who knows what it might be. So if we were to lay those three tracks on top of each other, we get a bit of a, an intro. It sounds kind of fun. That intro music, if we stagger those three tracks, the beat, the band instrument and the bass, we can sort of build some a dynamic introduction. So it might just start with a beat and then in a couple of bars, we might bring up a band instrument and a couple more bars, we bring up that bass. So however you want to mix and match it. But those three generally give us what we need as a nice catchy jingle to start with. So on that next screen, we talk a little bit about volumes. I've got a, a nice little fancy graphic here that if we look on the left-hand side, we've got the volume level and over time, you know, the volume just travels along. And unfortunately... That volume might, well, it's just going to have to change. So if we just advance again, what we can see is that I've got my little intro piece of content. You know, hi, my name's Matt and welcome to my podcast. And then we've got the podcast body, which runs out till the end of the uh, end of the podcast. And so in GarageBand, I use a feature which is called automation. I'll bring that up in a moment. But in automation, we're able to control the volumes that exist. And so we can sort of build in some, I'll call them pivot points. And we can control the volume that happens around that bit of content. And so you'll see from this yellow line, the volume of the music is up. And then, of course, it's going to drop down when we start talking about intro, the co- what we're covering. So that's that, that ducking of music comes back up. And then we're going to bring it across and it's going to drop down to nothing for the podcast body. So like I said, that gives a real professional touch. And if you watch students when they learn how to do this and they... They do it for the first time. And I've got young students, like third year students, you know, prim- real early primary elementary school, I suppose, students that when they see and hear this for the first time, they look up in amazement, like, oh my goodness, that is so professional sounding because the music is changing in time with what they've created as they're, they're talking. So it's, it's super good. So yeah, as we flick to the next one, I just simply say that's called automation. 
So just a nice big word there, automation, to get that one ingrained into Mm -hmm. your eyes. Also in GarageBand, there's a button that will sit in the top left corner, which allows us to flick between recording and our tracks view. And the tracks, as I mentioned before about those five sort of layers, that's, I guess, what's essential in this tracks view is, you know, we're laying one track on top of the other and that becomes really, really easy to maneuver and edit and trim and cut and all that sort of stuff. And one doesn't impact on the other. And so it's a lot cleaner. But if we have to then go and record another track, we might have to hit that button at the top there and bring it back to a recording screen. So just be aware of it. I'm not here demonstrating how GarageBand works, but just a couple little call outs. So this run sheet that I talked about before, if we advance that forward, what you will see is I call it my reverse staircase because it does look a little bit like a staircase. And so if we then were to put that inside GarageBand, if we sort of spread it all out, I'll get you to advance that one again there. Thanks, Norma. And we place it all out, put a little bit of getting it right into the uh, into GarageBand. You can sort of see what I mean by if we stagger it out over as a staircase, we've got the intro, the welcome, then one leads to the next, then to covering, then our discussion points, which is the big part, the wrap-up and sign-off. And so I guess that's what I'm saying in GarageBand by layering out on all separate tracks. It gives you that flexibility of what you record and how you record it and the control over you know the, each of the tracks to make sure that they're just right. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to jump in also for everybody who's a visual learner, you can visually see the audio, which is really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So this here is a little bit of a, an example script that I use in some of my workshops. And it's really just an opportunity. In fact, if you took a screenshot right now or a photo, if you've got your phone handy, this is a really, really simple way just to get people started and engaged. And just the idea of breaking it down into the five separate tracks. So um, just a useful little tool. Absolutely. And I think it's helpful sometimes to have a little bit of outline and script cues as well. So this is a really great one to screenshot. Awesome. All right. Well, we are going to talk now about publishing and distribution. Oh my gosh, we're right on time. We're just... Oh. We're doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> we're covering <laughs> we a lot of ground here it, today. And you know, we, we said this at the beginning, but if you have any questions, Ronnie from our team, Ronnie Gosh, our podcast specialist here at Podbean is supporting in the chat. So pop questions in there. Obviously, we are covering a lot of ground and we'll have resources to reach out to Matt and to myself here in the show notes for some of those handouts that Matt was saying, some links for educators and how to get started with Podbean as well. We're going to talk about publishing and distribution now, which really is... It's our big thing here at Podbean. So in terms of choosing a hosting platform, there are a few things that you want to consider. Right? Is there a monthly upload or download or bandwidth limit? Right? If you Can you have and host unlimited episodes? On with your current host. How much does it cost per month? Is there an annual plan? Things like that. What do their specific tiers offer? Are there resources available? Right. At Podbean, we're really known for our support and our resources. If you ever have any questions, you know, I'm always here, but we've we've got our full support team and you can reach out to them directly at support at podbean.com. But you know, throughout the platform, you can lodge a support ticket, things like that. And we've got really thorough tutorials with video walkthroughs, screenshots, all that kind of stuff for pretty much any question that you'd have or you know, a way to do things with podcasting. Yeah. yeah. Norma, this is where I'd probably jump in and say for most classes and teachers, this is the part where it gets scary. And yeah. in my mind, this is probably the most valuable part of all. So if you've gone to the effort of having students you know, script or plan out and then record and it sounds amazing and you think, gee, that was that was a challenge to get to that point. And, you know, you challenge maybe, yes or no. But this step here, this is the bit that makes it. In my mind, this is the ultimate part. If you, This is the bit Absolutely. where you go, we can share this to the world and you've come this far. Yeah. It's take that one last big leap of faith and step and you step into a world that you're probably not familiar with. And like you said, there's people like yourself to reach out to. You know, We're all here to help and get your content out online because that for me is the absolute best bit. So take that last step. Don't be afraid. 100%. And it's something where I think also for schools, for educators, for students to see your work out there in such a professional capacity. Like you were saying at the beginning, podcasting is an open medium. So you can put your stuff out there with the same big podcasters that have huge followings. And 
and all that kind of stuff. So that's number one. And then number two, with podcasting, once you establish your feed with a directory, every time you publish a new episode, it'll automatically be automatically. distributed to that directory. You've only got to set things up once. Exactly. That hard work's done. Mm. And yep. when you publish a new episode, you're only just going to do stuff on your hosting site. You're going to do it through the back end of Podbean. You know, you upload your episode, you pop in the the title, the description, any links. If you want to have a custom graphic for that episode, you can. And then once you publish that episode, it's out there. It'll be everywhere you've registered directory wise. Right. So it'll be on the Podbean yeah. app. It'll be on Apple Podcasts. So you don't have to you know, send things out every single time. The automation and the way that RSS feeds work is truly incredible. Especially because yeah. a lot of educators just don't have time. You know, <laughs> it's... no, that's the... <laughs> exactly. And to think about like, oh, every time I'm going to have to put my podcast episode in all these places. No, no, no. You just upload it once, and you just have to establish what directories you want to distribute to. Just that one time. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's not that scary once it's done. Once it's done, you exactly. just you, know, you, you put your put your files up, put a little blurb, and away you go. Exactly. And some other things to consider when choosing a hosting solution, just to wrap up here, is that there may be other features like live streaming, which we have at Podbean, or monetization, like we were saying with that dynamic ad insertion. You can use dynamic ad insertion to monetize, but you can also use it for announcements, right? For class announcements, mm. things like that as well. I obviously here at Podbean, starting a podcast has never been easier, and we'll have a code here for you in the description and on our resource page at the end of this presentation with that link to get started. So don't worry, we've got you covered. And now we're going to briefly speak about podcast directories. Because Matt, like you were saying, this is the thing that just makes podcasting so exciting, right? You put all this effort in, you you make this oh, podcast, you produce absolutely. it, you put it, you know, you've created a script, you've organized things, you've recorded it, you know, you've you've set the volume levels. And now you want to get it out there into the world. Absolutely. So yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the first is, where will your listeners be able to find you, right? Number one is podcast directories, right? And when we say a directory, that's generally an app where people are listening from, right? So hmm. it's going to be the Podbean public app. It's going to be Apple Podcasts. It's going to be Spotify. It's going to be... Amazon Music, right? Wherever your listeners are, that's a directory because you're going to list your podcast in that directory. Here are some examples. And then also, because we're going to talk a little bit more about Apple Podcasts in a second, social media, right? Does your education population, does your class, do any of the parents follow you know, any social media accounts for the school, a Facebook group for the class, anything like that? You're going to want to post there as well, as well as website. And... If your school has a school website or an intranet or something where you know it's a closed system, you can also embed your podcast there as well using our embeddable player here at Podbean. So that's just so, also something to consider. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what I'd probably add to this is the appearance as well for a school. When you start to show that your student's work is placed on, say, Spotify or the Podbean app or Apple Podcasts, the branding for your school... so. For you as a teacher and educator with your students, we're ticking a thousand boxes for learning. I mean, that's just awesome. And, and they're having fun doing it and they're excited by it. But your leadership in your school is like, well, hang on a second. Our school is now out there in the public space in this professional level. I mean, how awesome does that look for them? So there's a real big argument for saying, hey, keep your leadership informed as to what you're doing and where you want to post this and, and the content that's behind it. Because you want to really get their excitement as well because it's just going to build you know, a great brand and a, and, and a great image for your school and for you as a teacher as well. So you know, all of these, these directories, of course, if your school's got social media and, and of course, the websites, but you're really trying to engage with your community, with the world, and you're building your school's brand in the process of doing it. So you know, put that hat on as well. It's super exciting for everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it really does showcase you know, the education that the students are receiving and what they're able to create. It's its really incredible Absolutely. in that regard as well. Yes. Yeah, 100%. Correct. So we're going to briefly talk about submitting to Apple Podcasts, which is really great. First of all, to submit your podcast to Apple Podcasts, you want to have at least one episode published. You have to have one episode on your channel that can be a trailer. You want to have one episode on your podcast channel, on your show. And it, it, it can totally be the trailer, but you have to have one published. And the episode formats that Apple 
accepts are MP3, MP4, .mov, MP4, M4V, and PDF. So those are the formats for Apple Podcasts. And generally with podcasting, you know, you're going to have an MP3 format, you're going to have an MP4 format, but yeah. in general, every directory has different specifications of the complete list of formats. So that's number one. Number two is that you want to have your podcast title, description, category, and logo in your Podbean account. You want to have your podcast set up. People think, Oh, I've set it up and I can just get it onto Apple. And you want to just make sure that you dot all your I's and cross all your T's because Apple, there's going to be a human on that side who's looking over your podcast, making sure it meets their specs. And I also just have to say, you know, it's a real human. And over the holidays, sometimes, you know, they do get a backlog. Because people mm-hmm. take vacations, right? <laughs> so it, it's something where, you know, when you're, when you want to distribute to Apple Podcasts, make sure that you give yourself three days a week, depending on, you know, when you know you want to launch on Apple, right? So that's also an important consideration. That's right. That, it's a bit of a risk, too. People do think that, you know, I'm going to go through this process and just get it up online and, you know, it's, it's done. Right. Yeah. Do, do budget yourself a little bit of time. That's a really good yeah. bit of advice, Norma, is that you know you have a few days up your sleeve so that when you do submit something or you're trying to get your podcast connect account all up and running, you give yourself some time for things to connect. It can take a, a couple of days. Absolutely. Once you're set up, you're good to go. Right. Absolutely. Once your podcast is accepted, exactly. Yep. Exactly. So you're you can hit the ground running. Once you're in, you're in. Yep. Every time you publish a new episode, it'll be there automatically. So you're gonna want to make sure you get your podcast RSS feed by going into settings and then into feed of your Podbean dashboard. This is the information you need for, for iTunes or for Apple Podcasts. So that's you know where you're going to get that information. And then on the Apple end, you're going to go to Podcasts Connect. We've got the link here as well. You can screenshot. And we also have the link here from our support, which outlines the entire process. But you're just going to want to log in using your Apple ID, click on the plus button, submit your new podcast feed. And, and validate it. So, and you can obviously check your status and see if your podcast has been submitted. So you're going to want to go into the back and just make sure that, you know, it's been submitted and, and follow up on that, which is really exciting. And then we're just quickly going to show here on the back end. This is step number three on the back end of your feed. You're just going to want to hit view RSS feed here in red, as you see. So, you know, just from the back end of your publishing side here on Podbean, that's where you're going to be able to find that. I also just want to quickly mention, I know we're at time, but we might go a couple of minutes over. Thinking about the timing of your podcast is really important as well. And that's just making sure that you put your episodes out the same time every month or week or day um, so that people know when to expect it. Making sure that you budget time to record and making your podcast a priority. Hmm. At Podbean, we also show you you know, when people are listening. We offer a heat map and statistics. So you can see if all of your parents are listening, you know, right at school drop off, you may not want to release that episode at 10 a.m. You may want to release it at 6 or 7 a.m. so that they can listen on the way to school, things like that, just mm. to make sure that you can meet your listeners when in time they are listening the most, which is a really also a great tip. Yeah. So, yeah. this has just been it. Just a very quick overview for our teachers and educators, our master class. So, so far today, we have gone over concept and pre-production, recording and production, and publishing and distribution. So this has been our masterclass, our live masterclass podcasting for teachers. We have some resources for you. Matt Richards from Creative Digital Learning. Matt, it has just been such a pleasure, honestly. Thank you so much. For any educators out there... It's just been so great. And just having your perspective, you know, as an educator, as a podcast service provider who works with educators, just having your know how everyone out there, this is how you can reach Matt. We've also got Matt's links here in the description of today's live masterclass as well. So, Matt, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Norma Jean. My pleasure. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's been such a pleasure. I'm Norma Jean Belenke and the head of events here at Podbean. You can reach out at podcasting smarter at podbean.com. Here's a bit of our information. And you can find Podbean on socials at podbean.com. And then we've got some links here. If you want a discount code to get started podcasting, you're going to want to go to podbean.com backslash Matt Richards for all you educators out there. We have got some Podbean help videos and some resources. Thank you all so much for joining us. It has been such a pleasure. Matt! Oh! Wow. We covered so much. <laughs> we covered it all. This live masterclass. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, we really did. We really did. The key thing here is for all you teachers out there who are who are thinking about this and having a go, you, we're one hundred percent. You know, we're telling you, d- chuck your feet into the into the deep end and and and, and have a go. Just um, you will progressively get better and better. And then you've got the likes of Norma, and myself, whoever you need to reach out to to help support you in that process. You know, we're we're here to help and get you up and running because uh, we just we love it. It's fun. So yeah. Absolutely. We want everyone to have a podcast. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for this live masterclass podcasting for teachers. My name is Norma Jean Belenke. I'm the head of events here at Podbean. And we are joined by Matt Richards from Creative Digital Learning. If you joined late or you want to have another listen, you can find us on Podbean's YouTube channel and on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. We are brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetization platform and home to over 620,000 podcasts. Stay tuned for more upcoming live masterclasses and live events. And we'll see you soon. Happy podcasting, everyone. Yeah, well done. Good luck, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this replay of our live event episode. If you have any questions about podcasting and want to get in touch with the Podbean team, reach out to us at podcastingsmarter at podbean.com. Happy podcasting.